What is going on, everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And today, we're going to kick it off with round two of three of the what I would do mock draft. So I know a lot of y'all did not watch the first 10 seconds of the last video because some of y'all were saying that teams wouldn't draft this way. I get that. That's why I have every other video in the world uh, designed for that. But this one's just kind of to make me a little bit more happy, allow you guys to show uh, my colors and see who's on my board that's higher than others because again I don't like to fully be realistic I don't like to fully be my opinion so sometimes they kind of clash and don't allow you to see Tyler Smith go in the first round let's kick it off with number 33 here and actually there's been quite a shake up to some of my rankings uh, George Pickens actually fell quite a bit but I still think he's one of the best number one wide receivers in this draft best x receivers so to speak so if I'm sitting here and I'm the Jaguars, the guy who I'd probably want to get is Devontae Wyatt. Uh, depending on who else is here on the board, I think Arnold Ebiketti and Majai Sanders should give him a run for his money, but um, Devontae Wyatt's a different type of breed of dude. I mean, oh, DeMarvin Leal's still here, though. And you can use him inside or out. Screw it. We're going to go DeMarvin Leal. I mean, it's just the talent is too good to pass on. I have him great as a third round interior guy, but um, a blue chip edge rusher. So if you can find a way to use him properly, I just, you just have to work around him. It's like the guy's just incredible. And I think that in time, he'll be even better at the interior position. He's definitely a raw prospect. And this is a team where you can take a shot on someone like DeMarvin. At number 34, if I am the Detroit Lions, I'm going to be looking at safety. I'm getting Jaquan Brisker all day. I love Jaquan. I think that he's a phenomenal safety. And just the issue is, I don't think safety is that big of an impact. You, you obviously see um, even like the big ones, Mika Fitzpatrick, Jesse Bates, like they don't make the level of impact that a high-end edge rusher does that a number one wide receiver like Jameson Williams could be a number one producer will do. So that's the only reason why you see someone like him fall. And there's only a few teams that are honestly looking for a strong safety in the first round. Um, one of those being the Eagles. And I'm not doing trades just because I'd be trading up with the Eagles hardcore for Jaquan. I like Jaquan a lot, but that's where we're going to go with the Jets. I think that maybe going in edge rusher position would not be bad. Uh, again, actually, I don't really need to care too much about realism here. So I'm actually going to go probably Trey McBride because I would potentially select him here for the Giants. I just think this class is crap and Trey McBride is by far the best one like by a good margin. So you need to secure your tight end of the future. Uh, for the Giants, if I'm sitting here and I am them, I'm definitely looking at this linebacker group. I'm looking at Chad Muma. Leo Chanel is a big one. I don't really need a run-stuffing linebacker, though. That's not somebody. That's not something that I would personally target. So at this point, uh, did we? oh, we already took Trevor Penning. I was like, ooh, this would be a good spot to test him out because the floor is, I mean, the, the expectation bar, very low. But – man, at this point, I might as well go a linebacker or like maybe even a running back. Do we? Oh, I thought we already took Brees Hall. Brees Hall is actually up there in my rankings. He is heads and shoulders, my number one running back. And call me crazy for that. And I'm going to have to watch again. I already did my in-depth on Kenneth Walker, but I got to do it again because people are seeing stuff that I'm not seeing. And I could be 100% wrong. That's something I'm always proud to say. Like, I'm perfectly fine being wrong. Brees Hall grayed out as a 77.25, like and that's usually a, a first round closing in on blue chip grade. I, of course, knock running backs down a full grade. So that's going to be that mid to early second round pick. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be too shab I wouldn't be too mad with him right here. But honestly, you kind of have to go linebacker at this point. With someone like Chad Muma, who has the upside of being a really good coverage linebacker, I might want that. But Man, it's just between these two, I got I to gotta go Chad Muma here. I still like him. He fell quite a bit to me. But again, he's going to be in a situation where the bar is really low. And that's going to be a good spot for him to have time to develop. And he's going to make a positive impact immediately. Uh, number 37, if I am the Texans, I'm going corner here. And I'm actually going to go Trent McDuffie. Because this is, the Lovey Smith is there. So I think Trent McDuffie is like a late second on his own. But when you look at him in the right scheme, he's probably a mid to um, late first. And this is the cover two Lovey Smith scheme. I'm sending Trent McDuffie here. and He's going to be a freaking all-star. So 100% doing that. For the Jets, back on the board, 
you know, if I am the Jets, I have to continue saying that because people will be coming at me. I, I might be going after someone like Arnold Ebiketti here. I have a first round grade on him. That's a funny thing. I think that he's a phenomenal player. Uh, I just, I might want to go safety here with Daxton Hill, uh, Jalen Petrie. Jalen Petrie's fun. Uh, I would possibly, I'd go for Kirby Joseph in the third rather than Jalen Petrie now, though. I will admit. So, I mean, man, I might even want to go corner here. That wouldn't be a terrible choice either. There's a lot of routes that you can go. And I think I want to go best player available. That's going to be Arnold Ebiketti out of Penn State. Majai Sanders is literally locks, like locked with him in that high-end edge rusher position. But I really like Arnold Ebiketti's ability to be there day one. You know, obviously, Majai did not have that much production this year. I still think he's a phenomenal edge rusher, though. Uh, if I am the Bears, I'm going to be going after probably a wide receiver here. I am hating David Bell with a passion. Like I'm doing his report right now and I've had to stop multiple times because I cannot watch him and keep my eyes open. I am bored out of my mind. Call me insane. I respect that. But Chris Alave would actually not be too shabby. I know that it's not exactly the guy that we need, but I have a second round grade on Chris Alave. I think he has a lot of potential as long as you use him correctly, which I think pairing him up with Justin Fields would be great you're going to be able to get the maximum out of him. Number 40 with the Broncos. If I were them, I'd be definitely targeting a corner in this situation. A boundary corner is pretty crucial in my eyes. And we've already taken Kyrie Elam. I'm very happy to see that. Yeah, uh, I, I do like Kyrie Elam, Elam a lot. And for that, with already an established boundary corner, I'm going to take a shot on Tariq Woolen at UTSA. The guy flashes some crazy talent, some crazy talent. And if I'm sitting there, it's like, okay, Pat Sertan's already proven to be one of the better ones in the NFL. So we already have the number one wide receiver locked down. Let's test out Tariq Woolen. He's 6'4". He can probably run in that 4'4 range. And he actually wasn't too shabby at the senior bowl in a drill he's supposed to lose. So for me, if I'm looking at Tariq Woolen, it's like, okay, you have great mentorship with Simmons as well as Sertan. And then if you even bring back Fuller or Callahan, that's even better, but that's a perfect spot to go. So Tree Gwen, 100% would be my target right there. Rush McCurry, I, I really do like him. Those arms scare me, and he's probably going to go with at, at this pick. Uh, I love Devontae Wyatt. It really sucks that that he's um right there because he's, he's like borderline first-round talent in my eyes, and that's with me not liking interior defensive linemen. So at this spot, I'm actually going to go Roger McCreary. I think just it's too good to pass on in, in my books. I just, that is the way it is. At this spot, I would consider Zion Johnson. I would. I would. I would definitely do it. I like Dax Hill for the squad. I've been doing it a lot. That's one of my picks that I actually really like. And he can fit a slot corner if you want Cam Curl to move back to pure safety. He can play deep safety if you want, because I know that is a position of need. So for me, I am going to go Dax Hill here. I think he's a phenomenal safety and he'll work very well with this team in many different roles. And that's going to be a big plus 43 for the Falcons. I do kind of think that offensive lineman like Nicholas Petit Ferrer could be a really good target for this team. Uh, you know, you are potentially going to be losing Jake Matthews, 14 and a half million dollars owed this year. I would consider it. Wide receivers should be something you do target. John Mechie would be a good guy in the scheme. Sky Moore, Wandale Robinson, I'm actually going to go probably with Jalen Tolbert here, though. He's probably going to be the next wide receiver off the board. A uh, guy has a good frame. He has good route running. He has a great um, catch radius. To me, I think that that's kind of like the home run hit at the moment. He is a redshirt senior, but at this point, you know, obviously the one guy who's potentially getting you draft capital even more this offseason, Calvin Ridley was, if I'm not mistaken, 24 when he came out. So n it's not out of the box or out of the question to go after someone who is a little bit older and a little bit more proven uh, number 44. If I am the, um, the Browns, I'm going quarterback. I am. I'm testing out Carson strong. I know he has a crazy arm. Um, he had some big ups and big downs, but Carson strong has those high level throws where if I'm in the second, I'm going to feel comfortable taking him number 45. For the Ravens, so we already went George Karloftis for this team. Otherwise, I'd be pulling the trigger on Devontae Wyatt or Perry on Winfrey right now. I think Martin Emerson might not be too shabby. Marcus Jones wouldn't be too shabby. 
but I want to go right tackle here. And that's to me, I don't think Darian Kennard's that good. Sean Ryan might be in this conversation, but I'm going to be going Nicholas Petit Ferrer. The guy flashed some crazy good talent. I really love him, but he also has some very terrible plays. So I said he either he flashes fifth round talent and top 10 talent. That could be either way. I mean, I think that the Ravens would be pretty happy either way. And, you know, if he plays well, then that's great. It's a steal. If he plays poorly, you at least tried to get a high end offensive lineman at 45 second round pick. I'm trying to, I'm brushing it off. Sure. But I think Nicholas G. Ferrer would be a pretty good get for the Ravens. Number 46. If I am the Vikings, I'm 100% going to be pulling the trigger on Devonte White here out of Georgia. I'm again, I'm ignoring the scheme fit because I think Jordan Davis would be a really good addition. I think he'd fit really well, but Devonte White is just so good. I love him. Jordan Davis is just a big sack of meat and no disrespect to him because he has some very good plays. I, again, this is my mock draft. So it's like my personal opinion. I don't think that I would ever really draft a, a defensive lineman that can't play three downs. So number 47, if I am the Colts, I'm looking at wide receiver in depth and corner depth, and I'm starting to get a little bit eerie about this corner room. It's Marcus Jones and Martin Emerson at the top. You have Kobe Bryant in there as well, but he had a little bit of a rough week in Mobile. I'm going to be going Martin Emerson here. For the Chargers, if I were them, we already went an offensive lineman, which is great. I think that's great. Uh, the, just the value of Majai Sanders is too good, though. Again, he's a first-round graded player on my board. 49 for the Saints. That I, I don't think I really need to explain much to you guys about that, by the way. Um, I think Bernard Ryman might be a good pick. You know, you're going to be losing Teron Armstead. That's a big loss. And wide receiver is still a big issue, but Bernard Ryman should be a guy that, yeah, he has some big flaws. And to me, he's a late second. This is a perfect spot for him to continue developing because, again, that, that bar is very low compared to what it used to be, obviously, with Teron Armstead there. Number 50 for the Dolphins, I think they actually get Teron Armstead. I really do, and I love that fit. Like, that would just make me so happy. Um, for this team, I would actually do, I would actually look at Leo Chanel getting a big ass linebacker to just totally annihilate shit. That's me. That's all I'm fully on board for that. So Leo Chanel, he has a second round grade. Uh, he was above Chad Muma, but again, different style of linebacker number 51 for the Eagles. This should be a corner, but I want to analyze some other positions. Jalen Petrie would be a really fun guy to bring onto the squad. Um, so it's corner. I mean, Marcus, I don't, you don't need another slot. So at this point, I would just say, screw that corner two position, get it in free agency and just pray. Or you can go after Lewis Seen here, who I think is a really good safety. Uh, definitely for the, the role that you're going to be looking for. Again, Jalen Petrie, Kirby Joseph should be in this conversation as well. I mean, I don't want a quarterback for this team. I just don't think that Desmond Ritter is going to upgrade it at all. You know, when you, ah, man, this is tough. Zion Johnson would be a great get for this team, though. If it were me, honestly, with the guys on the board, I'm actually going to go Zion Johnson here. I really do like him. I don't hate Zion Johnson. It's just one, people aren't showing you the bad reps they had at Senior Bowl. It was really bad. Uh, but he also, he has a great work ethic. And when you put him at guard or center now, that gives him versatility. And he actually plays pretty well during the games. So that's a big plus. But again, there are those negative spots on tape. So have to put, put that out there uh, for the Steelers. I'm down to two guys, Perry on Winfrey and Sean Ryan, and both of them are studs. And I love them, but I think this defensive class is a little bit better than the offensive line past. Probably you got what Sean Ryan, everybody's over having Dylan Parham. The guy put on 30 pounds. Like it's going to be a little bit tough for him to uh, get comfortable at the NFL level playing against NFL talent even though he looked a lot better at the senior bowl, I'm going to go Sean Ryan here. I think that he does bleed Steeler. Uh, he can play guard. He can play tackle. My dream for the Steelers is to get Tyler Smith. But if that doesn't happen, Sean Ryan is far from a bad option. Guy is a phenomenal tackle who is probably going to project as a guard. Number 53, if I am the Raiders, I am just going to take my shot on Jordan Davis. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to make it work. Cause at that point, that guy's just a pure wall of meat. And that to me, like you're going to be able to at least do something on the interior of these offensive lines 
when you think about it, the Broncos, they got a developing interior. Um, the Chiefs, they, I mean, all these off, interior offensive lines are pretty good. You need to challenge them. You can't have them holding down the middle because then you're pretty much going to rely solely on edge rush, and that's where you can get chips in and running backs always blocking. I think interior pressure with Jordan Davis might be able to turn the tide in some of those games. 54, if I am the Patriots, I mean, at this point, I just, I know that Jalen Petrie would be such a good get on this team. We're going to do it. I think Jalen Petrie is just a freaking stud. So I really like Jalen Petrie. He goes here. 55, if I am in the Cardinals draft room, I would consider Brees Hall at this point. I would. I like Brees Hall a lot, like a lot, a lot. And um, I just don't see any off the lineman really worth it. I don't. And ooh, who do we get? We got Trevon Walker, man. Cause Perry on Winfrey would be a stud in this. Like I love Perry on Winfrey. I think he should go. And if he goes in like the late first, I'd perfectly fine with that. Cause the guy does have some special talent, but, and if I'm sitting here and I'm them, I mean, I might just go Marcus Jones and just say, screw it. But that's not very, um, it's not very smart. So looking at it, John Mechie would not be a bad guy to come in and replace what you just, what you're going to be losing in Christian Kirk. I think that'd be a good idea, but you know what? We're going to go sky more here. Yeah. I think sky more seems like a, he, doesn't he just seem like a Cardinal? I don't know. Like that's just a weird gut feeling I have is that he's a Cardinal 56 for the Cowboys. Who do we get? We got probably Devin Lloyd in the first. Uh, I think this would be a good time to just say, let's go get Lewis seen. Best safety on the board by quite a margin. Best player available. Let's stick him in and let's see what happens. We, they ran more They ran more snaps at their fourth safety than they did their fourth corner. So I think that Dan Quinn being back is going to be a very big, big plus for Lewis Seen, who's going to have that um, Keanu Neal, speaking of someone who's there, Keanu Neal style of presence. For the Bills, um, run stuffing is pretty big. You need to do it. Travis Jones is an absolute animal. I love him to death. Number 58. So we got a corner. We need to get some pass rush, and I'm going to go parry on Winfrey here. Uh, the guy's just literally my first line of scouting because I don't think his football IQ is very good. I think he can win against pretty much anybody, but he doesn't recognize plays that well. Is This guy is special. The rest of the tape definitely show that there were big holes in his game, but he went to Mobile and lit it up. 58, if I am the Green Bay Packers, I am probably going to be looking for someone like Calvin Austin, Wandale Robinson, somebody who could be a really big difference maker. I think Calvin Austin would be a very good get for this team. I'm checking the rest of the positions just to make sure nobody's slipping through. Again, Kingsley and Nagbear, is, he's somebody who I have a first-round grade on, would be a really good get for this team. Yeah, I, I would have to go with the best player available, and that is going to be, to me, Kingsley Anagbari, Anagbear, however you say it. Uh, number 60, if I am the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, I mean, I might go with a wide receiver here. I might. I keep going to the wide receiver, say I'm going to get it, and then go elsewhere. But, I mean, at this point, when I look at the positions, guys who should be drafted around this range, there's not many of them. There's not. And, and there are guys in the wide receiver room who could potentially be in that category. And I think that guy could be Calvin Austin. But the issue is the guys who are right here, they are going to be very similar to what Jalen Darden was last year. And to me, that's not going to be the case. Uh, Christian Watson could be the guy they target. He's definitely somebody who's built like, a, like an X-style wide receiver, and you can use him as a Y. And I think he paired pretty well with Mike Evans. So screw it. If I'm them, it's like, you know what? This is a big ass dude. I have my issues with uh, Christian Watson, but at the same time, I know that this class is not very good past probably mid round three, and you're not going to have a pick in the third round or in the mid third. So that's a good spot to go. 61, if I am the 49ers, I'm honestly looking at Calvin Austin. I'm, I'm like, Ooh. but I do know corner is huge. And slot corner could be something you could fill as well. I'm getting the best corner on the board, Marcus Jones. I think you could use him as a boundary. He's 5'8". You need some safety help maybe, but the guy is such a baller. I love Marcus Jones. Number 62 with the Chiefs. If I am them, I would probably go. I honestly would go after another edge rusher at this point, but that's just me. Running back, Brees Hall should be the pick. 
honestly. I really like Brees Hall. Um, I do not like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And I think that that is going to be their biggest win possible is getting somebody who could actually be an RB1. And in my 2023 mock, I like my way too early one, which you guys can check that out, by the way. I gave them Jameer Gibbs out of Georgia Tech, now Alabama. So I know the running back position should be fixed because it's just been filled with a bunch of guys who are mediocre talents. And I think Brees Hall could be something special. Number 63 for the Bengals. We already went interior offensive line, which I believe was Tyler Smith, who can move to tackle. I would definitely look for another corner. I just don't like any of the guys on the board. Um, I would go best player available. And honestly, that it kind of sucks because there's not really a best player available. Uh, Daniel Fialelli wouldn't be too shabby, though. Honestly, that'd be quite fun just to get him and develop him. I don't think he's that good of an offensive lineman personally, so I'd probably avoid it. Linebacker, you do have Christian Harris on the board. I would not be too pissed off about that. Man, this is a tough spot. This is a spot that I would personally trade out of, just to, like behind the curtain. I'm actually going to go with best, like the most potential player available, and that's Daniel Falele. Does he fit? Probably not. But at that point, I'm like, dude, this guy is almost 400 pounds. Uh, if he works, that'd be great. If he doesn't, mm. you know, Jesse Lucada made him look like a fool. But when you have Tyler Smith on the roster, you can sit Daniel Falele for a year. I would just be going two offensive linemen here. 64 for the Broncos, formerly of the Rams pick. This to me, probably should be an edge pick. And depending on where you go, this is kind of like pick your poison. I'm going to go Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. I love him. I love Boye Mafe as well. Those guys are, I mean, I think Boye is probably going to be the next pick, by the way. But that is going to be the video, guys. Check out for round three coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.